with a knick-knack patty whack give the dog a bone morning everyone how you doing because we're um we're doing pretty good tired we're but good i feel pretty good i feel pretty good actually um i'm not oh hi buddy like I'm, I'm i'm not gonna lie to you um I probably need just a little sleep, because we got to bed a little bit late. Morning, Tyler. It's early on the West Coast. Uh, <laughs> um, I went to bed a little late, but I have a lot of, like, energy or something from the fact that we got out of town a little bit yesterday. I, it's hard to explain. Like, after being stuck in, inside and in, in, the, in the county, for 15 months, I have got some sort of like, I, I, I'm on some sort of high from just going somewhere. That's the best way I can explain it. Cause you know, I got, I guess I got like six hours of sleep last night, which is, you know, that's sustainable. Six is sustainable, but it's not ideal. I gotta tell you, like, I actually, I feel really good. Yeah, yeah, like, my, yeah, my brain is stimulated, maybe. Also, I, you know, I drove a car yesterday for, like, eight hours, so. That would, that should make you tired, though. And I fell asleep really, like, really easy last night. Chippy. I, was, I don't remember you turning the light out. We went to Charlotte. Charlotte, North Carolina, which is about three hours one way. And yes, the Subaru is nice to drive long distances. And great. Hi, sweetheart. I just dropped the thing on me. Yeah, I mean, six hours is all you really need. Like, as an adult. And why, okay, your mileage may vary, right? Different bodies are different. You might need seven, you might need eight. But generally, you, um, you can get by on six when, you, when you're in adulthood. I find that I do a lot better with more, <laughs> but. Did you miss us yesterday? You missed us yesterday. Here we go. Oh, you're so cute. Okay. Can you not get enough attention? Hold on a sec. What? I saw the head. Ow. Here you get you. He's, he keeps using his claws to adjust his body in a way that he normally doesn't. I posted a picture so the mods can put a picture up so you can see what cereal this is. We're trying a new cereal you again. You are. Uh, okay, well, you did you have a bite of it? I had a single loop. This is, there are 4,000 versions of Cheerios. This is Cheerios Oat Crunch Cinnamon. And this one's pretty good. I tried a cereal on- um, Tuesday. On Tuesday. And it was just Frosted Flakes and Fruit Loops together. And it was a little disappointing because it, it basically was Fruit Loops, but it had stuff in it. It's what it tasted like. It's what it felt like in your mouth. This Fruit Loops with Shards is a great name, a better name. Thank you, Slick Duke. What this tastes like I had a single one, they were tasty. This tastes like we're starting with a base of Honey Nut Cheerios. So you're at this point, you're either in or out. If you're in, listen on. But it's also got those, those like oat clusters. So you got a little like additional crunch in there. So overall, a little bit like a, a crunchier cereal than Honey Nut Cheerios for sure, because of that. Also, a little sweeter. They're sweet. A little sweeter. So, you know, if you like if you like Honey Nut Cheerios, you might want to give us a shot. There was another flavor of this too. So like, again, we just went to the store. There are there are seriously like. I miscounted on the vlog. It yeah. was 17. There yeah. were seven, in our local grocery store, 
there were 17 types of Cheerios. And they're broken up into categories now because you got like Cheerios, Honey Nut Cheerios. This is the Honey Oat Crunch uh, Cheerios of which there are flavors of this. So this is the cinnamon and this, it, and it has, yeah, it's got notes of cinnamon in it too. I guess I should have. It actually, I, I taste like honey, honestly, more than I taste cinnamon, but it's good. And then there's another one. This is intense. I'm not changing it. <laughs> Becca says, did you recount? So in post, I was watching the footage back and there's, there's two where I combined them as one because I thought it was the same thing. And I paused it and I realized that they were different flavors. So yeah, there's so many types of Cheerios. But these are really good. These are actually really good. Can't be real happy. You see your kitty cat? Aw. So because we were out of town yesterday, we left early last uh, yesterday morning. We left at like 7.30? Yeah. Did we get out a little bit later than that? Well, yeah, it was about then. So we, we fed him, and you know, the feeder can feed him all day, which is wonderful. So like, he didn't miss a meal or anything. My parents didn't have to come over, but um, you know, he was, I'm sure he was lonely because yeah. no one else was here. But um, because of that, today he's probably gonna be real clingy. He's clingy. The, his chair is sitting in the sun downstairs, mm -hmm. and uh, like the last week he's been in it, and like forgetting about us, he's like, mm, I'm gonna go sit in the sun. So, today he is here. Jack had asked of the cereal, does it cost a gold bar to buy? No, not Morning Summit. This is a normal bowl of cereal. I tend to buy cereal based on what's on sale. If I'm gonna buy cereal, I, ba I base it what's on sale because the sale is always extreme. Like, the only sale I've ever seen at our grocery store is uh, buy one, get one free. And you don't, you don't have to buy two. You can buy one and just get 50% off. So like, yeah, I think Publix the- Publix doesn't. I think the, the cereal by default is like $5, which is, in my opinion, too expensive for cereal. But when the cereal's $2.50, I'm like, no, that's good. So I just wait and buy all the cereal at 2.50. And what's great, also Spiffle is right. Cereal is one of the most consistently overpriced foods out there. It's true, absolutely true. You look at cereal and you're like, that's insane. Unless you buy the, um, unless you buy, um, if, if you go to Walmart and you buy the bags, you know, the, there's the the, the off bags. the off brand mm -hmm. that sells it like it's it's in a bag. It can feed like a, an army, and that's that stuff's real cheap for you know price per ounce. That's always a good deal, and those cereals are good. But if you want to do something outside of the, you know, eight cereals that they offer, um, then I would wait for a sale. Coffee. Personally, wait, these are good. It's suddenly cat bath time. It, it, it depends on the food. It depends on the food. There are definitely some boxed foods that are cheap. Source. College. Have you ever, have you ever heard of a homestyle bake? <laughs> what, is it Stouffer's homestyle bakes or is it a different company? I, don't, I think it's a different company. I think it's a different company. Man, homestyle bakes. They're like less than four dollars, and they will feed four people. They will not feed four people very much food. They really should feed three people, especially four college-age boys. But gosh darn it, we we made it work. And they're easy enough for you. Ryan says, "Have you ever heard of chicken rice pea?" I invented chicken rice pea. Homestyle, oh, homestyle bakes are, it's it's a meal in a box. And it's not just like a hamburger helper. It and has like a can of chicken in it. And it's not very good. Like, it's fine. It's serviceable. And like, 
for again for four college age boys who just want to eat food and want it as as quickly and easily as possible. I, it's fine. Clean that leg. But yeah, your mileage can definitely vary on on cost. Certainly, uh, healthiness of uh, processed food. But this cereal, it good. Just take away here. You see this leg? <laughs> I like how you have become the bath spot. Could you do me a favor? No. Yes, what do you need? What do you think I would need at breakfast stream oh, while I have reading alerts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. you wouldn't mind. We have a tier two sub from Radio Dread at six months. Cold toast. Cold toast. And we have seven months from Hall Pondo. I didn't do that. Ch I see Chaz, Chaz is doing Chaz that. Chaz is doing it. We have 21 months from Howie Sona. Thank you. 33 months from Squid. 19 months from Gon Gonzo Tinkerman. Eight months from Scatman Scabadop. Uh, 12 months from Skaynork. Oh, hey, that's a year. Yeah. Oh, I'm sitting on a lemon. You want the lemon? Why are you on a lemon? A lemon toy. Uh, 32 months from Mr. Incredible Noob Lord. And 11 months from Jithy Picard. Um, we have 500 bits from Mech, who says the first match of the day and the football Euros start at the same time as breakfast stream, so my dual monitor setup comes in handy. Hope you're having a good week, grandparents. I hope the football is going well. I've seen a lot of people in Discord talking about... The football? The football. Mm -hmm. I'm not familiar enough with the football to understand exactly, specifically, what is going on. But I know that, yeah, like Mech says, it's been very entertaining. People... People that are into the football, this is like football time. That was the best explanation of sports I've ever given. You're so good at the sports. Currently, it is, it is, <laughs> currently it is football time. Satsy sent 300 bits. Uh, clown. Last clown. night, late for me, knee-high Mr. Saturns came back in stock. They are now back out of stock. All I'm saying is I was not prepared to regret missing that again. Oh. Did... Are they are they gonna restock again? I don't know. I'm trying to think. That was the last restock. If you really want one, I'm trying to think of like I, I, mm. I mean, obviously, you could probably you could probably find one on on eBay or yeah, Yahoo auctions. I'm just thinking, if you really, really, <coughs> really want one, is sooner better than later, or should you wait a bit? Probably wait a bit because I don't know. everyone that's putting them on eBay right now bought them. You know, Setsy got one. Oh, you got one. Oh, I misread that. You got it last night. Oh, never mind. Oh, good. I just read that and it was like, oh, how can Satsy get one? Okay, cool. I wonder if they're just going to go back, they're going back in the vault. Because these are the same design, actually. Yeah. These are the same design. Everything's the same as the first time. Oh, not prepared to miss it. Oh, I, I, I guess I read that as like, I was not prepared, no! Anyway, this is the same design as the, the ones that came out. Uh, 2000... 2009? Yeah. I think it was 2009. So, like, maybe earlier, I don't remember. Um, they might bring him back again at some point, you know, maybe in another 10 years. So, if anyone wanted a, um, I regretted it that. Steven wanted one. I wanted one. But, I mean, at, at the time, I was in college, and those things were, ex they're, they're, I mean, they're already pretty expensive, but they're expensive yeah. to ship. And, like, that was just an impossibility. I was like, I cannot do that. So it took ten years before I was able to even, you know, get that. 
And it was it was actually one of the best Christmas presents I've ever received. I mean, it was just very memorable to have opened. I'm that. glad. It was really great. So. Satsy says, I also have the game scripts coming. I spent a lot last night. Oh. And the thing that's frustrating, we talked about this on Tuesday, is they're still releasing stuff. They're like, yeah, no. So I'm just worried that, you know. There's going to be something else really cool. I just got a um, pencil case because they had them on sale a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I picked up the scripts while I ordered it because I was like, well, I don't want to pay for shipping. I like, well, the thing is. For one thing. The scripts was one of the earlier things they talked about. Yeah. And they've released a billion products since then, but that was one of the earliest things that they they talked about. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just really exciting to to finally see that it's that it's out. <laughs> I zoomed out for a second. Steven, is Mr. Saturn thigh highs? The big Mr. Saturn is called the knee high Saturn because it's it's knee high. Well, I mean, if you're if you're not six and a half feet tall, it's knee high. Actually, it's still might it's it's it like still might be it still might be knee it's, high it's, for you. It's a tall it's a tall dude. It's a pretty tall dude. Yeah. Manga says, "Where did you put the Mr. Saturn?" Um, because we don't see it on the vlog. It's in the guest room right now, along with so much other stuff. Because there's not a good place to put it. Did I want it? Yes. Do I want to display it in some way? Yes, but probably not in this house. Yeah. It's like it's like it's like video games. It's like I've I have all these video games. I would like to display them. Can I do it? No. <laughs> so we only get we. It's fine. It's fine. Also, how was your cereal? The cereal was great. My yogurt is frozen. And I'm very upset. I'm hoping it melts. Also, as of yesterday, as of yesterday, I started consuming caffeine. Caffeine again, because it's been 30 days. So, it's not that I was aiming for an arbitrary number, but I was trying to wait until I got my sleep better. And uh, my sleep's been good for probably about, you know, 10 days or so. So, I felt comfortable with that. I was like, okay, I'll start having caffeine again. So uh, I had a cup of coffee when we drove out of town yesterday and um, no no adverse effects on sleep. Although again, I, I never felt like I had that. So Tyler says, how was it without it? So here's the thing. I never, I never really abused caffeine to begin with. I was having some insomnia issues that I felt we're unrelated to caffeine, but I figured if I was going to try and solve them, I would cut out caffeine as well. Um, I usually had one cup of coffee in the morning, and that was it. Sometimes on Saturdays, um, I would have a soda, because um, I like to have a soda on Saturday evenings. And that's about it. So I, I don't really consume a lot of caffeine, so I was like, I bet this is not going to do a whole lot to change things. Um, but you know, it uh, it didn't. It did. Yeah, 30, 30 days, thirty days except for one morning on breakfast stream. I did have a sip of mouse coffee without even thinking that it, she was still drinking um, caffeine, caffeinated coffee. So yeah, it 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 didn't do a whole lot for me, but I also knew that it wouldn't. It was just one of those things like, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do this. I'm just going to do the whole thing to say I've tried everything to try and get my my sleep back in, in, in order. And I did. You know, um, I'm, sl knock right, on wood, I'm, I'm sleeping okay right now, so. It's yogurt. I'm crossing my fingers that that continues. Anyway. Did it thaw? Uh, maybe enough, we'll see. Okay. Okay. Five hundred bits. From uh, Delahan of Light, who says, uh, "Morning, Stephen. In this cat, in this month's disc only, you mentioned a cat clicker that got your cat to stop screaming. Where do you get one? My cat screams anytime he can't be in the same room as me. I just so I just redid the Amazon shop thing. I don't remember the URL. I'm hoping one of the mods can. There maybe there's a nightbot. There's a nightbot command for it. Thank you, Brandon. 
click the link that Brandon posted, um, and I have things separated into categories, and you can click the pets category, and I have the clicker in there. That's the clicker that we use. Um, it, I can't tell you that it's going to work on every single animal, because it just might not. Um, but for Kep, it works. It definitely works. And uh, what I've been able to do with it is get him to stop meowing at night completely. So, Chaz says it works on two of our cats, but not the third. Yeah. Yeah, that's basically how it, it, it's like, it might work, it might not. You don't really know, but it's worth trying. And uh, Penguin Frog says, how's the other feeder? It's been good. It's been good. I, I think the the cool thing is, again, like, peace of mind that the cat's going to get fed. Because if we were going out, of, like, when we went out of town yesterday, the only ways that we could deal with that are either, you know, have my parents come over and, and feed Kep, or if we're going to leave dry food, just leave, a you know, a bucket of dry food out. Which is not great, because if you have a cat like ours, the cat will be like, gorge, and then puke, and that's bad. So, whether you get the, the, the feeder that we got, or some other feeder, um, it's just a, if you, if you have a, if you have just one cat, a feeder is something to consider if you're feeding them, um, dry, dry food. food. I, I, we only have one cat, so if you have multiple cats, I'm not sure how that would work. Like, I don't know if you could... I, like, I don't know if you could get multiple auto feeders and train them to go to specific ones. That seems difficult. Maybe it's not impossible. I mean, Chaz and Jeff, they've trained their cats to eat at different locations in the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's not maybe... impossible. It's not impossible. I'm thinking, like, if you had the... So, theoretically... Mm -hmm. If you had the feeders next to each other, even, mm -hmm. they go off, the cats run over, there's one cat in front of one, would the other cat be like, oh, <laughs> and move to the next one? Yeah, Armored Frog says, get some facial recognition cat feeders. They have some that only open when the there's like an RF ID chip. Oh, and you put it you on put a on collar. collar. But they're not auto feeders, it's just something that closes. Oh... Okay, that's that's a neat idea. Mm -hmm. That's a neat idea, and that's you know it's basically the same line of thinking, huh? It's cool cat stuff out. I'm sure dog stuff, but yeah. Do y'all have the litter robot? No, but like that's another cool cat thing I've seen. The litter robot. What is the litter robot? It's like a circle, and it sits kind of sideways, and the cat can go in it, and then when they're done, it spins and like scoops everything. Oh, oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen those. Uh, a friend of ours at one point had the one that connects to the water line. And, and washes the... And, like, it washes out the thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know that I could ever recommend that. Uh, I mean, it would be fine. If you know your cat and you know your cat, your cat well, it would be fine. But if your cat gets diarrhea, it ain't, it ain't a pretty picture. So if your if your if your cat's really regular, so like it actually that sort of thing probably be fine for Kep. Kep's, yeah. Kep's stool is perfect all the time. Knock on wood. Um, but there would have been a terrible thing when Sagan was around because Sagan's stool was bad. So um, yeah, I guess I guess it would be fine if your cat's stool is, is normal. Yeah. <laughs> no, a team firm stool. <laughs> Got a chuckle out of that. Eighteen months. From uh, from Gamer Girl, uh, that's a one plus. Appreciate that. And uh, thirty-two months from Cybe. Thank you, Cybe. Oh, uh, actually, Lissa says there are cat feeders that read the microchip, like on the collar, so they know what to dispense for which cat. Okay. So yeah, that's cat stuff is like advanced. There's. There's all sorts of neat stuff for, for, for cats that, and the most important part of all of this actually is that they, um, they stop relying on you for the food so much. So no more of, no more of that, even though it's cute. 
30 bits from Jithi Picard. Uh, left not only the county, but the state. Yeah. Yeah, so, again... Leaving we... the state's not that hard. <laughs> yeah, we're not terribly far from the state line. Um, leaving, uh, leaving the county was a big deal. You know, we, we have not... We have not escaped from here in, uh, in 15 months. And, uh, Charlotte was great. Charlotte was really great. The big thing for us was just, we wanted to, we just wanted to leave for a little bit, go do something, go see things that we haven't seen. And, uh, we went to Charlotte, we went to, um, let's see, I was trying to think what we got for lunch. We, we got ramen? Mm-hmm. Ramen? Escape is a uh, uh, phrase. Escaped is a phrase. We're not, <laughs> not being held here. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, we went to um, Camp North End that's in That's what it was Charlotte, called. I couldn't remember. Which is an yeah, old... day trip. Ta uh, train depot. I, it was something with trains. And... Um, some developer bought it and was turning it into, like, an art hipster community. It was really cool, and it's all industrial. And they had little food stalls, and they had a ramen one. It was very hipster. Like, you know, there's certain things that are just, you walk into a place and you're like, oh, this is hipster. This is, like, young, hip, early 20s hipster. And I, that, when we walked down, it's like, oh, yep. Yep, that this is that's what this is. Mm -hmm. It was nice. It was nice. Um, then we oh we went to we went to a, we, we went to a camera uh, mm -hmm. camera store. Um, they were still doing film, and I really wanted to ask if the dark room was on site, and if I could go in and just inhale, like the smell. I miss the dark room so much. The FBI would like to know your location. <laughs> your, the local police would like to know your location. Um, yeah, we went to uh, went to a camera store just because... It just has um, a scent, you know? I understand. Uh, the, uh... So, uh, I needed a, I needed a camera bag, which sounds a little insane, right? Because I, I have, I have camera bag. But, um... I got a, uh... I got a microphone for the camera about a month ago. I never really talked about it on the vlog because... I just wanted to use it behind the scene. It's a piece of production equipment, right? So it's not like a, an interesting purchase, but I wanted to, to play around with it, get used to it. And I've been using it for about a month and I really like it, um, but it sits on it sits on the hot shoe and um, because it interfaces with the hot shoe, which, which is really convenient because there's no cable. However, that makes the, the, the form factor of the camera really weird because you've got this camera that's long and then you have this thing sitting on the top. So I was like, I'd like to find a more cube-shaped bag. Just something that was like a little deeper that the camera could sit in and I could, I don't have, so I wouldn't have to remove the, the microphone ever. I could just leave it on. So we went in there and the guy was super helpful and we, we just started looking through all the bags and trying to find a bag that would work and I found one. So it's probably, um, you know, it's probably not like the best bag in the world. Especially because I the bags that I was using before was ten button. They're really good. Yeah. Um, but trying to find something for the, you know, the hot shoe is just or the you know the the form factor is just really difficult. People don't know what the hot shoe is, I guess. Uh, okay, so on the top of a camera, um, there's a little metal thing. There's a little metal thing like. It's square. Every. I'm tempted to say every camera has a hot shoe. Like, every camera has a hot shoe. And, um... What about the cold... Well, okay, so... Uh, that's also a thing. Uh, so, it's just, it's just a shoe. We'll just call it a shoe. It's a shoe. It's a hot shoe if it interfaces with the camera in and some way. It has electricity. If it has electricity... Well, that's what I know, because... If it's, if, it's, if, it's if it's sending some signal from the camera to whatever's in it, it's a hot shoe. If it just holds things, it's a cold shoe. So they're, they're you know, um, they're the same thing. Digital Nugget says for putting it on a tripod, um, it's normally on the very top of the camera. No, it, the the you're thinking of the quarter inch mount underneath. That's where the screw goes, so you can put it on a tripod. Hot shoes on the top of the camera. So 
for instance, common common thing for a hot shoe is a, a flash. Yeah, is a flash. So for in photography, a lot of times you need a a flash because um, you're taking pictures inside or whatever. You need some bounced light. You put the flash in the hot shoe, and whenever you take a picture, um, it sends the electrical signal to the shoe to, with, power the to power the light so it runs off of the battery's camera. That's a hot shoe. Digital Nugget says it's a mount for external tools. Exactly. And uh, in some of the Sony cameras, um, one of the ways they can interface with the shoe is with... A hot shoe. Is, is, well, is with a microphone. So you actually can get really high quality digital audio from the shoe. So you put a microphone into that same slot and you don't need a wire. You don't have to run a wire into the cable or into the into the camera because it's interfacing with the camera. So you wind up with a microphone on the camera, but there's no there's no wires. It's really cool. Anyway, hopefully that was you know, somewhat somewhat helpful. Anyway, you learned something. You learned something. Uh, 3D Bits from Judasis says, is Clown Tidings. I'm excited to report I got the job at Best Buy. Uh, when I walked... I see a poll. When I walked in, the general manager who I was meeting with thought they had already hired me. <laughs> That's a good sign. If you walk in and they're like, are you reporting for work? And you're like, no, I'm here for the... I'm here for the interview. And they're like, oh. Well, you're hired. Also, I'm so glad that there's a poll... How is your shoe? It's hot, it's cool, my shoe normal, I don't believe in shoe. <laughs> remind me, remind me at the end of breakfast stream. Remind me at the end of breakfast stream and I'll, 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 I'll give just a quick presentation. <laughs> I will, so people understand like what, what the heck we're talking about. It'll be like show and tell. It'll be at the very end. Sweet kitten. 59% of you don't believe in shoe. With 30% saying they have normal shoes. And then 6% cool, 6% hot. Beautiful. 14 months from Thorough Down. We got 300 bits from Lost Vagabond. So what I'm hearing is that when you get the ostrich egg, you'll be getting all 17 Cheerios and make one big bowl of cereal. <laughs> there was something else we had joked about the other night in addition to the ostrich egg, but I don't remember what it the was. The bananas. No, it was something other than that because bananas were the third thing. But now I don't recall what it was. Some fancy bacon? The toaster. Oh, the toaster. That's it. That's it. There's this toaster... There's this, this crazy Japanese toaster. It's like $400, and it toasts one piece of bread at a time. And Perfectly. Yeah, it's like the, the pinnacle of Japanese technology has been used to make the perfect piece of toast. Anyway, occasionally people bring this up to me, both online and in real life. Because um, one of our friends, Michael, brings it up like all the time and is like, He's like, well, you're the toast guy. You have to get this toast thing. And I'm like, I'm, I was like, I'm, I cannot under any good circumstances ever spend $400 on a toaster. But I have people tell me about it on Twitter every once in a while too. Like they'll come across something like that and then they'll be like, now you can have the perfect toast. Anyway, so when folks were here playing Risk last Thursday, um, Michael is chaos. Michael is chaos. Uh, whenever whenever folks were, were here last Thursday, Either, I think it was Will. Will was like, he's like, what you do? He's like, you get that ostrich egg and you get that toaster. He's like, then you can have eggs on toast and it'd be ostrich eggs on the perfect toast. And I was like, I was like, that would be a $500 breakfast. Uh, but yes. <laughs> he's like, you can just return it. Just, just. Just try it out and be like, mm, didn't work out, and send it back. <laughs> yeah, I made one piece of toast in it. Anyway, 
Uh, three bits from Digital Nugget. Uh, that's great to hear about the new Searle, but I missed a lot of that ordering my praise hydration mug. Oh yeah, uh, so today is the last day. Remember on Tuesday when I was like, it's the last day. That was wrong. That was wrong. It's you lied. Well, I didn't lie so you much forgot. as so much as I am dumb. Um, I was trying to use Tuesday to announce that Thursday would be the last day, but I incorrectly said sometimes and not others on Tuesday that Tuesday was the last day. So uh, yeah, after after the stream today, water will be gone. So there won't be uh, there won't be water on Friday. So <laughs> I'll hail the drought. But yeah, it'll also be the last day for uh, for mugs if you're interested in picking up a, a water mug because we'll be taking that um, off the store to tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no more water ever again. Uh, I mean, who who knows what will return someday, right? Like, yeah. it's possible. It's not impossible for something to be gone forever. Maybe someday things will show back up and be a fun little throwback. But we're gonna continue to use that third slot is like, hey, look, other liquids or a solid. Ooh, wouldn't that throw things up? Maybe. Throw things. That's not the phrase I was looking for. No, no. Let's, a let, lot of that was awful. Let's throw things up is not the phrase. That's not. Um, ooh, mug cake. That's a that's a funny one. Mug, that's a that's a funny one. Ooh, I like mug. mug I'm gonna remember that one. Anyway, 14 months from Summer Sencha, 15 months from Charlemagne 25. Cat beast. Three hundred bits from DC Racer. There I've been watching go. the vod from Friday, and chat got on the topic of emails. What's y'all's oldest? My main one is still Bell South. Any any emails? So we were talking about Gmail specifically, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I have one that's quite ancient from 2004. Four or five? Five? I think it was early 2005. And like, I've had older emails, but like, they're all defunct at this point. I yeah. Mean, I, they're, Same. They're gone. Because um, I remember. I remember having an email for. Does anyone remember the ISP Roadrunner? Like, I had one for them. And even before. I had AOL. Even before Roadrunner. I had one too, so yeah, it's been a long, it was a long time, long, long time. Having one that's still active is wild, you know, because like, if you if you have if you have an email from a million years ago and it still works, that's that's incredible. That's really incredible. Um, <clears throat> drink on my coffee. Aww. Twenty-one months for Mr. Game Boy. Uh, Thirty-three months at Tier Two Gold Toast from Cormand. 300 bits from Chill Days. Hi, grandparents. I'm getting a cat tomorrow. Oh. Uh, he is a scared and hissy shelter cat, so I'm both nervous and excited about it. Aw, uh, that's wonderful. Chill Days is a kitten? Is it a spicy kitten? A spicy a spicy kitten? That's what Kitten Lady calls them. It says, it says they're spicy? They're spicy. Okay, yeah, I, okay, yeah. I guess they, they could be um, a, little, a little spicy. A two-year-old two ginger, ginger boy. boy. Give him space. Yeah. Once he kind of learns the house and the routine of the house, and he'll he'll get acclimated and calm down. Yeah. Fluffy. Kitty, will, Kitty will be a bit of a project. Yeah. But I mean, as long as Thomas's you, cat was as a you, as long as you know that going in, I think it'll be fine. Thomas's cat was a stray cat that got picked up and oh, was yeah? was nice enough to be able to adopt to a family instead of. Yeah. Released after spay neuter. TNR. TNR. Yeah. He's a problem child as of right now, but I'm prepared for it. Good. Yeah. And it's it that's what it's all about. It's just like Yeah. Mentally preparing for that and knowing that it's gonna take time. Yeah. Cats especially. I think cats more than dogs. They they need space and they need time and like they move slow on things. Um they don't like change. So they re they need a long time whenever they're adjusting to stuff, but I think you'll do fine. Uh, 300 bits from Super Thingy Me Bob. I spent my whole life being apathetic to football, but this is the first time in my uh, life that my home country of Scotland has qualified for an international tournament, so I kind of feel like I have to keep up with results. I think that's fair. 
I mean, I feel that way with the Packers. Yeah, yeah, it's, the it's the same way. the Packers in the playoffs, I'm like, okay, now I guess I have to watch. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's the same way. I, I I think that there's probably a lot of people that that have that exact same feel yeah. too. I, I I don't think that you're alone there, um, because it is exciting whenever you know something like that ha- mm-hmm. happens and you get to root for like your team. Anyway, good luck, Scotland. It's a place I've never been that I would like to go at some point. I think that'd be cool. Um, yeah, like Mech says, Euros and World Cups are special even to those who don't, you know, usually watch football. I mean, it's kind of like, uh, you know, the, the Super Bowl here. I don't normally watch football. I watch Super Bowl. So I can win. 15 months from 63 fills. Uh, Pickle Tron gives a sub to knees. <laughs> That's as tall as a Mr. Saturn. 100 bits from Bubbles 8738. 300 bits from Gold Mage. Good morning. Yesterday, my first Malmix print for Vine Valley arrived, and it's so beautiful. I can't afford the actual canvases, so I need to figure out how to frame the prints. How would you suggest storing slash displaying the Polaroids? Um, There are some people who frame them and put them on the wall. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can put them straight under the glass for prints if you want but a mat is going to protect it longer if you put a mat around it so it's not touching the glass. Yep. Um, Some people do a binder with, like, page protectors. Yeah. I've I've seen some people do that, and then they, on the back of one, they'll tuck in the the little Polaroid, and on the front it will be the print, and then you'd turn it and it would be the next pair. Yeah. So there's, there's there's a few different... Yeah ways that people have done it because i've seen um i've seen that where people were they almost they almost have like a binder of them yeah like a little coffee table like a little coffee table book so i've seen uh i've seen people do that with mouse prints no wrong way um and sometimes people will do that and then they'll take their favorites and frame the favorites yeah there's a lot of different ways to do it uh let's see 100 bits from bubbles 33 months from randy b 29 months from Kazuyume, uh, 9 months, triple plus, from Aunt Dawn. 3 different from Gamer Girl says, uh, so I have a question. Did you know that there's Oreo cereal? I tried some yesterday, and it's not that bad. I did know. It's it's kind it's an older cereal, right? It's been around for a long time? I think it went away for a while. Oh, okay. I, I feel like I remember from childhood, although I've never tried Oreo-os. it. Oreo-os. Is that what they were called? Or, or Oreos? Oreo-os. That's a hard... oreo O. That's a hard thing to say. Oreo-os. Oreo-os. Anyway. Um, yeah, I mean... I, I, Oreos are fine. There are people that think that Oreos is like... Pinnacle of, 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 of cookies. I've never been a big Oreo person. Like, they're okay. I like them, but I would rather have like a homemade chocolate chip cookie. Yeah, well, I mean, there's also there's also two there. Well, there's categories of cookie too, because there are hard, crunchy cookies like an Oreo, and then there's soft cookies. But even even amongst the harder cookies, I uh, I don't love Oreos. Basically, they're they're fine. You know, if they're on the table, I'll have a few. But like, I'm not a, I'm not an Oreo. And you so, don't like them in milk. Nope. Nope. It's because I don't like milk. No, you don't like milk. I don't like milk. So, you know, I'm not... There are people that, like, they are self-described Oreo fiends. I mean, they just... They'll take out a bag. And I was like, yeah. So when it comes to cereal, I'm like, eh, I don't know if I'd like that. It probably just tastes like, um... What's the... The the cockatiel? And he's like, I got chocolate, baby. On the commercial. He's like the Kix Rabbit's best friend. What? You guys know what I'm talking about? What is that called? Choc- Cocoa Puffs. That's it. See? That was easy. Cocoa Puffs. Sonny. Sonny. That's his name. Is that the... I'm not sure that that's the... The actual slogan. But the fact that people knew what I was trying to get at was good enough. Like, they probably they probably taste pretty much... They probably taste pretty much like Cocoa Puffs. I don't know for sure. I have not had Oreo O's, but they're pro- it's probably pretty similar. It's a it's a puffed puffed rice chocolatey cereal. It's similar. 
Anyway, uh, four, 400 bits from Padawan Becca. How about Mother for our next one? In honor of her dad jewels for Father's Day. A cup of melted mother. Mm mm mm. Goes down smooth. Yeah. Three hundred bits from Cog9 who says, My first email was a web TV email. That was a while ago. Folks here might be old enough to remember the commercials of it was like it was it's basically this it was, you got a keyboard it was like now you can use the internet on your television and that whole concept is just really it's really bizarre now Brandon says we had one of those it sucked <laughs> It was a different time. Yeah. It was a different time. Anyway. Third of it's from Shia says, To throw up is most definitely a phrase. Throw up some lights. Throw it up on the board. It's a thing. Yeah. Okay. It makes me feel a little bit better. Like, when I think of throw it up beyond the obvious definition, I think of, um... You know what I think of? I think of using... AirPlay or the whatever the, the Google thing is. Whatever Google is. I don't know what Google's thing is. I don't know what it's called. Google Transmit. <laughs> I don't use Google stuff, so I'm not sure. Chromecast. That's it. Chromecast. So, like, I think of AirPlay or Chromecast. Like, hey, throw that up on the TV. That's what I think. Because um, I've definitely used that, that phrase before. <laughs> Google telepathy. Given enough money and time. <laughs> Seven months from Eli and Company. Uh, Gamer Girl twenty one eight gives a sub to Busy Kick, and we got three hundred bits from Furious Kitty. Says got my first shot yesterday. Strangely, both arms are sore. Lifting weights before the shot was a bad idea. I'm, hopefully that heals it's yeah. fine. Hopefully it heals fine. I uh, before I got to the lifting weights part, I was like, oh, that's weird. But also, you, you just you can just have general soreness, so it wouldn't yeah. even be that terribly unusual. Yeah. One of the one of the weirder things um, for for us going to to Charlotte yesterday is that so so we live we live in Myrtle Beach um, and the 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 vaccination rate here has been lower than the national average because uh, national average is now fifty. I don't know something. I don't know. We're at like we're. I think we're almost to like 30%. Just a little lower. I thought we were closer to 35, but... Maybe. 30% club! So anyway, um, one, of the, one of the big, big differences from Charlotte, which is a, you know, capital C city, Charlotte is huge, is that pe people are wearing masks. Because here, for many, many months, people... That's not really been a thing. Um, there's, there's, there's always, there's always been a lot of contention about it here, and I'm just like, oh, okay. But once we hit the the CDC's recommendation about fully vaccinated folks don't need to wear masks, um, it, it's dropped off to like le less than five percent. I would, I feel extremely comfortable saying less than five percent of people here wear masks. Which is fine. Um, for us, the way we've been doing it is if a, if a store has a sign up, because the store can still dictate it. So if a store says mask required, obviously we'll, we'll wear a mask. And then the other way we'll do it is if the employees are wearing a mask. If we go into a place and the employees are wearing masks, we will wear masks to just, I guess, solidarity for, for the employees. But most of the employees around here aren't wearing masks because if you're fully vaccinated, you don't have to wear masks. Um, but in Charlotte, it was extremely different. Mm -hmm. It was like walking into another world, and it's just three hours north. We went to the mall because there was a game store in one of the in, the, in one of the malls, and when we walked into the mall, 80, 90 percent of people were in masks, and like we're so used to not wearing masks that we walked into the mall, and the, the mall was a thing. It's like CDC says fully vaccinated people aren't required to wear masks, and I look for that a lot now just to make sure they're displaying that, because if they have a mask policy, I want to abide by it. 
and I walked in and I saw that. I was like, okay, so, you know, no masks. And we walk in and like 90% of people are in masks and I'm like, this is, this is, Very this is Bizarro where... World. This is Bizarro World because where we live, people throughout the pandemic weren't wearing masks anyway and were throwing a fit about it. And the minute that the CDC was like, you don't have to, they're like, oh, thank God. So like, it's just really weird going from one to the other. Yeah. Yeah, in Mexico, it seems like a good kind of bizarre. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. It's just very different. It was very, very different. So um, it was, it was, it was, it was curious to see that. So Charlotte was nice. <laughs> Charlotte was nice because, like. It wasn't a situation where the there was signage that was unclear or anything. It's just that people just wanted to wear them. So I probably looked like the odd one out, you know, if I did like before I put my mask on, you know. We'll get there. We'll get. We'll get. <laughs> Eventually, like eventually, eventually, we'll get to the point where things will be much better and everyone will feel a lot safer. But we also went to IKEA. We did go to Ikea. We bought one thing. Also, and this is probably obvious for anyone that has an Ikea in their town, um, little pro tip, go to Ikea on a weekday. Not during a, not, yeah, a lunch like, or a dinner. Yeah, sometime between like three and four. Because I feel like anytime we've went to, um, I feel like anytime we've went to Ikea, it's been like on a weekend, the place is packed. Yeah. So we went to Ikea yesterday, and there's like nobody there. It's like three. It was awesome. We we're just walking through and like, there's a few other people just like, just perusing. I was just like, this is crazy. I've never seen no one at Ikea before. So that was really neat. I also looked at, um, I looked at standing desks because I've been having, I've been having a little pain sitting. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not ready to, like, make any sort of, like, purchase or anything, but I like the idea of a standing desk. The problem is, as many of you know, the walls up here are only as, as high as my hands. So, like, the wall, it, you know, because this is basically an attic, and I would have to do a whole lot of measuring to see if that sort of thing would work up here. But I was blown away at how cheap they are now, because in my brain, this, I'm still thinking of standing desks from, like, ten years ago or whatever. And those things were thousands of dollars. Yeah. Now they're 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 at, they're, they're at IKEA, and I, they had one that looked honestly reasonable and nice for like three hundred bucks. And that that that's nuts. You can buy us you can buy a standing desk for like three hundred dollars from IKEA. And it gets tall enough for and you. And it gets tall enough for me. Yeah. So again, something to consider if you're uh, working uh, a desk job in any way, and you're like standing desk sounds good like seriously <laughs> back one says you could almost afford a toaster with that money they had one there i think I'm, i hope i'm not leading folks astray i think it was like 329 dollars. that sounds right and like that's nuts i can't believe that they're that cheap now so uh yeah something to consider even if you're tall i can't about if, if once you get to like seven feet tall i can't help you but like if you're if you're six and a half feet tall um that's just, I cannot believe how inexpensive those things are now. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm still seeing how my, 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 my pain and stuff goes. Um, I'm getting a physical here in the next few weeks just because it's been a long time. I don't want to do that. I'll talk to the doctor and see what she thinks. But, um, yeah, I might look into that. Because I was, I was convinced for one they were prohibitively expensive. I was like, oh, well, standing desks are thousands of dollars. And then I was also convinced that they don't get tall enough for me. And both of those things were proven incorrect yesterday. And I'm now I'm like, ooh, well, hold on. Well, could this work up here? So I'd have to measure some stuff. Anyway, something to think about. You don't know what you're going to learn on Breakfast Stream. You might learn about desks. 500 bits from Light Rock. Who says, uh, sorry for mentioning it again. I still am overjoyed <laughs> from winning the Vine Valley painting. Donkey Kong Country is one of my childhood favorite games. The levels were hard as a kid, and I was so stuck there for a majority of the time. I am tempted to get a print and add in the levels on top, though that may be too much. Light Rock, congratulations. 
Um, we, uh, we, we're excited for you. Yeah. Um, Mal was actually giving me updates while I was driving yesterday, uh, because you were talking about it in the Discord. And I was just, I was really, really excited for you. I really love whenever, um, folks get one of Mal's paintings and it's just, especially when it's like a, a, a an old game, a retro game, like a childhood favorite where someone, uh, you know, grew up with the game yeah. and it means a lot to them and they managed to get that. I, I share in that excitement with folks because I'm like, oh, that's so cool because they're going to have that on their wall and they're like, that's my game. I just... I love that. So, um, enjoy. Enjoy. Because it's, uh, it's a good one. Yeah, it is. It's a good one. Mal Mal's Donkey Kong Country pieces have been some of my favorites, actually. Because um, you've done Vine Valley, the map screen, and Treetop Town. For Donkey Kong 1? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah. Swiftless says they're all your favorites. I am a I am I am a Malmix fan. I am a Malmix fan. Not every painting is my favorite. Not every painting. But there are definitely some that I really, really like. I think it's cool because they're they're different in person. They are. They like, are like we try so hard to get <sighs> I'm a Malmix stan. <laughs> I learned the that word. And everything looking as close to the actual as we can yeah but there's little details that don't quite come across as well or the colors or the depth of it there's I only there's there we do as good of a job as we can turning the physical item into a digital item yeah we do our absolute best so then you know when people order a print or um a canvas print or whatnot, like that they're getting something that looks really good. And I get it. I gotta hand it to Redbubble. Their canvas prints are really good looking. Yeah. Like if, some people have sent me photos, and, and you can't tell. Yeah. Sometimes I have to like double check. I'm like, was this the person who bought this one? And I'm like, no, that print looks good. Yeah. Like, just hang. Like if you if you uh you know if if the 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 original canvases are prohibitively expensive. The canvas prints are a really good alternative, especially if it's one that's been gone for years and, you know, it's obviously it's already sold. Um, they look really good. And hanging on a wall, you can't even tell that it's not like an actual original piece. Only when you get up close then can you be like, oh, okay, this isn't like a textured painting. That being said, an original painting is different. And if you get up close to it and you inspect it, like there are... There are details, like like Rock says, the details are stunning in person. It, it's go to a, go to an art museum. Yeah. If you go to an art museum and you find a, a, a historical piece, being able to see it in person, it, it's just different. It's just it's just different. But you were saying you had to hand it to Redbubble. Like I I have been impressed with the products. Yeah. Like. And the seeing like, the phone cases, and I haven't seen a ton of stuff in person. Yeah. But like. I ordered a bag of um, the Goose Game. Yep. And I was impressed that. with how good that was. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, like, just good, there's a lot of good products. They do really good with the, the color reproduction and yeah. saturation and things like that. So, it's an option. Uh, canvas print is an option. Uh, we got five months from the insane musical Thespia. Uh, Twenty months from Bofbanoff. Three hundred bits from Bella Bunny. Says morning, grandparents. I just woke up from a dream that's best described as Animal Crossing Fallout. What weird combo of games would you like to see come to life? Animal Crossing Fallout. There's poor animals. Uh, let's see. Um, I've, I, I've I've said it for a long time, but I would I would always. I've always wanted to see games games that are generally more adult have uh, like a do a like more kid friendly approach like a like a Halo game that was more kid friendly and then the opposite also um, like a Mario game that would be more like gritty gritty 
you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be Grand Theft Mario, but it's something that would be a little more... Like, I really like the idea of doing that sort of thing. The other thing I really like is taking games out of their normal genre and forcing them into another one, because sometimes it works. Um, you know, who would have ever thought that an XCOM-style Mario game would work? And yet, now we're getting a second Mario and Rabbids game. So, like, you know, there's... Mechatosh says, I want M-rated Metroid. Be a great idea. So I like those sorts of things. Um, I would love to see that. That, that so and any anything that combines things in a in a strange way. But also M-rated Metroid, that sounds good. Oh sorry, sweetheart. Oh, my there, knees hurt. We, we could go we could go M-rated Metroid. Let me just say. <laughs> Oh, I'm, we are done with it. It could be done well. It could be done well. It's po It's not impossible. That's what I say. It's not impossible. Oh, you don't want Steven this morning. It. Are we mad at him for being gone all day? No, he's not mad. He doesn't He doesn't possess the, the oh, mental please. acuity for that. Sorry, sweetie. My he's, knees he's, hurt. I think he's just warm, which is why he went over there by himself. Morning, Mio. Uh, three to bits from Willie Peters. Uh, you and Mal, uh, you're a Malmix fan. How shocking. Jokingly sarcastic. I am. Um, I am. I'm, you know, I'm always, I'm always seeing what she's working on next. Or suggesting things for her to do. Her next one, good. It's a way, we have a little ways before it's out, but like, yeah. it good. Good. <laughs> You're a Mount Mix fan? Name every painting. How much time we have. Although I don't think that I could name all of them. It was 102. Yeah. Cause there's 102 and more to see. To be a Mount Mix fan is my destiny. <sighs> I'm sorry about that. 300 bits from Hailing Fire Game. Uh, I have been a, been a long time watcher slash lurker, and I'm finally able to show some support. Uh, hope you two mods and chat all have a great day. Oh, that's very sweet. Thank you. Appreciate that. And thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my Mount Makes rep. If I had a list of the titles of it, maybe I could like... You don't have a list anywhere. Actually, hold on. I do have a list. You you emailed me a list at some point, didn't you? Oh, are you gonna? All right, those aren't the those are the titles or no? No, they're not. But please don't. Well, can you tell my email's a mess? Yeah. Who? I don't even know where it is. Anyway, we also went to three game stores yesterday. And they're a little mini chain. Like, did you find it? Can I do? I, I want to talk about your thing, but I want to do this first, so then it's out of my system because now it's on my it's on my mind. They don't have to be done in in, in order, right? Because the the poker rap's not in order. It's not Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Venusaur. That, that's that's not how it is. You're gonna seriously do all? No, of them? I'm not gonna do all of them. It take forever. I, but but this joke, which has already run its course, and I'm like, yes, and, I'm, and I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on, just a little bit, just just give me a little bit, just let me do a few, just let me do a few. <laughs> Rolling, Lost Woods, Depths, Sho Shoshone, Purgatory <laughs> Festival, Tree Town, Edisnum, Meditate, Golden Sands, Green Hills, Zebus, Attack, Black Reach, We're almost home. Gotta see them all. Gotta see them all. Okay, you're done. Del Perro, still life, meteor. <laughs> okay, I'm done. The bit was dead when it started, <laughs> but I had already put forth the effort. Oh, God. I'll try, I'll try. National Park, cabin by the lake. Have you seen duality? For goodness sake, there's Bonneton and Nowhere Islands, and there's Pink Cloud. For this last one, I am gonna get kinda loud. I love Horseshoe Overlook! 
I was focusing on the rhymes instead of getting as many in as I could, but I do love Horseshoe Overlook. Partially, one of the reasons I love that is because it reminds me of you playing the game. I have yep. never released the video of you playing the game. Correct. I have a to-do list thing. I'm not saying it's gonna be soon, but I'm at least writing it down. How have I never done that? How have I never done that? Okay. Anyway, so we went to some video game stores yesterday. Also, and thanks, Mr. Gamble. Now you're good. And um, we knew about they have they had three locations when we first learned about them. We had gone to two, and we were looking at them yesterday, and we were like, "Oh, we'll go back to those two. The one that we hadn't gone to before closed, and then they opened a new one since then." Yep. So we went to three of them. Yep. <clears throat> and one of them opened an arcade next door, in an ice cream parlor. And they called it Scoop World. So this this video game store is called Video Game World. So attached to Video Game World was Scoop World. And I was like, finally, a place for father and son. <laughs> the uh, the video game, I never talk about it in the vlog, but you'll know, because I'm mentioning it here. The video game store that I show on the vlog, video. The, there's a few video game worlds, and we went, in we, Charlotte. we went to them. But I filmed one of them. The one that I filmed uh, had, th was it the building next door? Yeah. The building next door burned up. And they had to deal with, like, the fire damage at the video game store as well. Did they lose product? No. Their store was Their okay? Their store was fine. They had the water seeped from the fire truck. Oh, okay. And they had, like, a smoke smell, but they didn't have any damage or anything. I, um, I'm blown away by what that store has. <clears throat> like, and then they there's crazy stuff. They rebuilt the building, and then they bought it and turned it into Scoop World. I see. I, uh, I saw some, uh, I saw some stuff I haven't seen before. I saw, um, well, I've seen a box copy of Little Samson before, I guess. Yeah. I saw that at the, the Greenville thing, but they had, they had a box copy of Little Samson. A little expensive. Like the the problem with video game collecting right now is that I actually don't know prices anymore. Prices have have continued to climb to the point where when I see something, I'm like, is this unreasonable? I have no idea. Is it unreasonable as a concept? Yes. Video game prices are now unreasonable, at least for a lot of them. But um, I I don't know the market anymore. It used to be that I could um, was it more or less expensive than the toaster? Try over 10 times more expensive than the toaster. So the, pro the problem with the video game market is that now, whenever I go into a store, I have no way of judging things. I have no, I, I don't know. Because it, it, I used to know like, oh, this is how much this game costs. And I have a very like strong mental figure of this. And I, I get to know, you know, if a store is, is, you know, generally like overcharging or undercharging for things. And I don't know that anymore because the video game market has continued to climb. Like every every week, every week I talk to Roland, he'll tell me about some new crazy thing where you know games are this much or this much. Like do, do people do people know? Do people know that the video game market has, has changed as much as it has? Because some people aren't like it. They they play video games, but they're not into like collecting. They're not into retro market. Like I'm talking nuts. Like. Like almost almost everything has doubled. Most things, have, like a lot of things, have tripled. Some things are much like ten times, ten times the amount. The box copy of Little Samson was six thousand dollars. That's a lot. They had um, there. There's so many GameCube games now. So many GameCube games that are they're hundreds, they're hundreds of dollars. Things that we just got two or three years ago are are selling for like 100 like things that i bought for like 20 bucks yeah are selling for like 200 dollars um all the pokemon games all the pokemon games are super super expensive like they had uh, the the i saw pat so they had path of radiance path of radiance was 300 bucks 
and like I'm just like Jesus, what what's going on? Uh, even it's it's affecting it's starting to maybe mildly affect the Wii, mildly for some of the the higher ones sealed. No, not sealed, not sealed. Path of Radiance, just complete. Um, it's crazy. Uh. Rhythm Heaven Fever was 110 bucks. Mm -hmm. Rhythm Heaven Fever was 110 bucks, and like I, I kind of get it because that's a rarer game anyway. But like it's never been anywhere near that high. So yeah. the fact that it's it's starting to you know stuff starting to climb up that way is is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so my advice, uh, to to be perfectly honest with you, my advice is to n not collect video games. I'm extremely grateful that we finished N64 and we finished GameCube and we are basically done with Wii. Wii U games are still inexpensive. They that market really hasn't changed probably because it's still so recent. If you want to if you want to collect something, um, Wii U is reasonable. For everything else, I'm like I I don't you can't do it. Yeah. You can't do it. <laughs> In fairness, Vagabond. Collecting video games never used to be anywhere near the 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 price that it that it is now. Like, because yeah. people have joked, especially Roland, that I should collect PS2. I couldn't do it. It, it it's it's a complete non-starter. When when games um, when games have climbed to this price, like you you just can't. The average first the average person can't even start. Um, and then even even if you're well to do, you can't get anywhere close to completing these things. PS2 is already going to be a little bit harder because the prices skew a little bit higher for the average for the for the whole console. But when they climb three times that much, you know, congratulations to Elon Musk. If Elon Musk wants to collect video games, I guess he can. But he's about the only guy that could. So yeah. What Jamie says, buy what you want to play, and that's it. That... At some point, maybe when collecting the collecting craze, because there is there's a collecting craze going on right now. Right? Jeff Bezos is it's there's a collecting craze because it's going on with a lot of things. It's affecting Pokemon cards too in huge crazy ways. When and if that dies down or the market explodes. It might be reasonable to collect video games again, but right now I am extremely happy we're almost done with Wii, and I cannot imagine a situation where we, in any meaningful way, attempt to collect more games. I just, I don't know, that I, something has to change. There's just no way, and it's not everything. It's not everything. Like the stuff that has always been cheap like the the super nintendo carts that have always been seven dollars they're still seven dollars but the ones that were one hundred dollars they're five hundred dollars now so like or yeah what furious kid says never collect anything what if you move correct 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 300 bits from shy says to paraphrase uh how miyazaki Video games like anime were a mistake. Video games were a mistake. Read a bit from Colin says, I didn't realize it was this bad until I saw that person on Twitter buy a cartridge of Earthbound for $420. Nice. And since the DS Pokemon games have become absurdly pricey. Yeah. And like, I've known about all this, but that, I know the tweet you're talking about, and that tweet was the first time I saw it apply specifically to Earthbound. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Jesus. Because Earthbound carts for many, many years have been, if you're getting a cart, like somewhere between like 150 and 200, usually on the lower end. Um, and like we've bought, we've bought Earthbound before for much, much, much cheaper. And the fact that it's now over $400 for just the cart is, uh... There was a game I saw yesterday that I need to ask Roland if they have. <laughs> What's you can't? It's called you. No oh, one can stop. No one can stop Mr. Domino. 
Mal wants to play it solely based off of the um, the title and the cover. Solely based off the title and the cover. It's just called "No One Wants to Stop" or "No, no one, one can, can." No one wants to stop. No one wants to stop Mr. Domino. Let him do his thing. He'll wear himself out. Anyway, um, so that's a game that uh, that we saw at the store. We did not pick up. <laughs> it is not a pub crawl. I'm sorry to. I'm sorry to disappoint. Anyway, uh, four bits of Dark Overlord says, uh, uh, re Pokemon cards. When I was out getting my second jab on Tuesday, woo, I was in a game shop and was going to get some Pokemon cards before I noticed they were behind the locked cabinet and just decided, oh, never mind, because that's a lot to deal with on a whim purchase. <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. Um, yeah, it's, it, it, mm. Target? Target. Target's Target. the one. And Stop Walmart, selling. actually. Yeah. I don't know if it's nationwide Walmart, but certainly some Walmarts. Uh, they don't sell them in store anymore. Because there's, uh, there's, there has been videoed fights breaking out, uh, trying to get Pokemon cards. So, again, and this is not just Pokemon cards, it's not just, it's not just retro games. Right now there is a, there is a collecting thing going on. Um, you, and I, I don't, I don't know why it's happening right this second. People want to feel like they can, I guess, hold on to a thing, or maybe it's like partially create, like fueled by uh, NFTs. Like that got people thinking about it. But also, even before NFTs were taking off, like retro gaming was on its way up. So I don't know what the heck's going on. Anyway, don't collect anything. Yeah. Sell off everything you own and live in an RV. Chess stole the beans. Oh, thank you, Chess. Thank you for stealing the beans. I forgot, I forgot about beans. We got talking, I forgot all about the beans. Sell off everything, live in an RV, and I will live vic vicariously through you. Because I, I can't do that. We could. We can't. We could. I, 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 I gotta tell you, I do love, um, I do love video games, and I, I have loved collecting video games. I'm very happy that we're just about done with Wii, and, uh, we should be able to finish Wii U, I, I don't think without any big problems, because they're not expensive yet. But at that point, I'm gonna be done. I mean, we've collected N64 through Wii U, and that's cool. Uh... The dream would still be to, to work on Super Nintendo someday, but not now. It's gonna have to... It, stuff's gotta get cheaper, man. I... I you, you can't do it. You cannot do it. You cannot spend... You, you, you cannot spend that kind of money on that many... Big, it's, it's impossible. It's impossible. It's, it's, it's impossible. Holy crap. Think of the vlogs if you lived in an RV. <laughs> It would be the same as they are now, but there's just less space. I guess we would go to a place. Like, we would drive to a place. Yeah. Anyway, um... As a reminder, though, uh... If you, if you, are, if you are interested in, in collecting games, Wii U is still a fairly viable thing. I cannot... There's a few... There's a few... Game & Wario, actually. Yeah. Game & Wario... That surprised me. Because, um... I bought Game & Wario, like, new. Um, Game & Wario is, like, a hundred-something dollars. But most of them are, are are relatively reasonable. Like, you know, somewhere between $7, 7 to $15 for a lot of them. Uh, it's just finding them. Yeah. Because a lot of people, this, you may have come as a surprise, a lot of people didn't buy a Wii U! <laughs> why would they do that? Why, what's, 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 why was that the case? Yeah. Certainly not because it was named badly. What? That's, it's not, it's not right. Emil says Xenoblade X can reliably call, be called the most important Wii U game now. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not, the, well. Most important, probably a little subjective, but in important, yes. Absolutely important. We've gotten a lot of ports, and there are certainly already games that existed on other systems, but, like, yeah. Yeah. That one's, that's pretty important. Yeah, paper, yeah, the 
Yeah, well, we know how Emil feels about Paper Mario. But the Paper Mario game, like, that stayed on that stayed on Wii U. And Game & Wario obviously stayed on, on Wii U. Star Fox Zero. Um, I don't even know if they can port that because of how the controls work. They'd have to really change that. Um, but yeah, it, it, a little subjective, but I, in a general sense, I agree with the meal. Um, mm -hmm. Xenoblade, Xenoblade X is important. Hearing a bit from Willie Peters says, I know someone who lives in a van. Is it down by the river? I wish I had coffee to then just sip and stare into the, I'll still do it anyway, but I'm out of coffee. No, Emil, you misheard. <laughs> Let's start wrapping up for today and talk about... Um, what's going on? What's going on. It is... Thursday. It is Thursday, which means that uh, there's another Casino Heist episode coming out today. So, um, we actually start the heist today. It's been ten episodes of prep. If you haven't watched that, it's... I mean, I, I think it's worth your time. I think it's funny. Um... Check it out if you get a chance. Even if you don't normally watch GTA, you don't have to normally watch GTA to to get it. But um, if you've watched the past heist, there's some there's some little extra funny stuff in there. Uh, what else is happening? Uh, next week starts Grandpa's Game Garage. So if you picked up Game Builder Garage for the uh, Nintendo Switch uh, and you're looking for some levels to play, or if you found cool levels or made cool levels and you want to submit them ggrandpa.com Please go to ggrandpa.com um, if you have the game uh, because you can help us rate some levels and um, make a difference in what gets played for uh, for that series. So that'll be starting <laughs> Get Apple now! Uh, so that'll be starting next week and go, it'll be next week will be Game Builder Garage then the week after will be back to Mario and then Game Builder Garage, etc. So, uh, yeah. It's going to be a good time. Tomorrow. Tomorrow we're back in Breath of the Wild. Yeah. For the last time. Uh, we've already finished the game, but as a bonus uh, as a bonus stream, I will be attempting the third Trial of the Sword. that will be tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Vagabond says, do you want two-player games? How long should games be for? Any length is fine, because, like, at a certain point, I'll just, I'll just cut it. But also, longer episodes are fine. Two-player games, uh, not specifically. I don't mind showing off. If it's something that you feel like I could, like, show off, then that's fine. But, like, it'll be a solo series, so keep that in mind a little bit. If it's something that's like, this is cool enough, even though it's two-player, to show off how it works, that's fine. But if it's like, this is a full game, and it's two-player... It, it may not get shown. Just is the Coffee. thing. Uh, so yeah, uh, tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern, Breath of the Wild's back for the final time, and we will um, we'll be doing that. Yeah. Maybe a little extra. We'll see. Also today, as uh, Macintosh BC says with 330 bits, rip water. Uh, today's the end of water uh, as we know it. It's a shame. Water had a good run. Time to dry up the oceans. Uh, so if you're interested in, uh, the mug, the mug will be on the store until tomorrow. That's at stevenshop.com if you're interested in the, the water mug. And I think... That's it. Is that all of the announcements? Yeah. Oh, Garfield card on Saturday. You don't oh, have Garfield to, card's you don't, coming out. Uh, Dan sent me, Dan sent me the first episode, so, uh, God, I cannot believe we made four videos of Garfield card. If you watch the first one and you're like, this is already too much, then I guess don't watch the other three. Uh, but, but they're great, and and man, it just, you really appreciate Mario Kart. You just really, you don't know how good Mario Kart is until you play another kart game, and you're like, oh, Mario Kart's really good. Because you kind of suspect it's good. You're like, I think Mario Kart's a good game. Uh, it is. Play a different game. People like to complain sometimes. They're like, oh, the rubber banding and Mario Kart and the item imbalancing. And I'm like, play another game. Play another game. Just... Just play another game. Play another game. Play another game. 500 bits from AJ, uh, AJ U. Mitch. He says, Morning, grandparents. Today is my birthday as I reach another cycle in the lunar calendar year. You're the ox. I'll be spending this special day at work, and my gift this weekend will be my second dose. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And that's, hey, that's a good gift. Yeah. I mean, you might be feeling like, like, slightly under the weather yeah. <laughs> from your gift, but ultimately, ultimately a good gift. 
And uh, 300 bits from Colin says, I've rated about 40 levels since launch day, and I've submitted a ton. So many amazing levels, especially since it's only a week old. Have you recorded it yet? No, that is the, that's what I'm doing today. I'm actually going to be recording the first batch today. So, uh, and it's, it's going to be a small batch. I'm only going to do five. I'm going to just do what I need for next week, so it'll just be five. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what's in there. I actually don't know. I have not checked. So I'm excited. I'm really excited. Uh, just because I've seen a few things on Twitter. People have sent stuff to me. And uh, I'm like, oh man. There's some incredible stuff that people have managed to do. So I'm looking forward to that today. Porter from Battle Beckett says, in my best Tom Fox impression, Steven, I want Grey Goose! Someone send that to Tom. Tom, I hope I hope I did you hope I did you justice there. Uh, and I did. Okay, I promised the shoe. I promised the shoe. Real quick. <laughs> so I don't break the promise. Bye. <sighs> That's three hundred bits from Grabobly, rudely interrupting clown. Coffee. And three hundred bits from White Rock. Uh, sorry, real quick. You mentioned Garfield Cart. And thanks to me on Saturday, we played it on Discord. Let's just say I'm no longer organizing game nights anymore. Okay. Welcome back. Hi. It me. Okay. I promised the shoe. So real quick to end off the stream. Um, so this is the vlog camera. You don't. It you, is large. It's and larger heavy. than it used to be. It's larger than it used to be. Wait, wait, give me a but second. But it's fun, because it's a camera and I like cameras. Oof, oof. Got some. There might be a little dust on the flip cam. <laughs> Don't let it fool you about what it Here. can do. Here you go. So this, that, there's the flip. Um, <laughs> wow. It, it has a material on it. Yeah, it's like tacky. Yeah, I don't know. It just, all of the kep hair just went shh. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing what 12 years can change. Almost to 12, like 11 and a half years. 11 and a half years. Aw, we'll <laughs> oh, it's cute, right? Watch. That's how it plugged into the computer. Which puts a lot of strain on the it port. Does. It's a really <laughs> terrible design. Um... Sandwich Man says, that's what your logo is! <laughs> it is, it is, I get that a lot, actually, where when people finally realize, they're like, wait a minute, that's the, yeah, that's, that was the, that was what we used to, to film. And for a while, I, for a while it made sense. But, uh, you know, I guess at this point, we've been filming, the Lobby. first, about, uh, roughly the first 900 days of the vlog are filmed on the, on a flip. Roughly. And we're now, there's now an additional 3,300 days or whatever. So it's on a bunch of different cameras. But, um, yeah. I've thought, I've actually thought about altering the logo a little bit. Um, it would still be similar. Um, but I've thought about uh, altering the blog logo at some point. And I might, um, but I haven't. <laughs> so it's still, it's still just this. But anyway, yeah, the camera got bigger. So about the shoe, just so I can, uh, <laughs> it's icon, it would be, it would be a very small, it'd be very tiny incremental change. It would not be like a drastic overdue, it'd be incremental. Um, this, well, you know, the grip's not the part of it. Also, I've talked, to, I've talked before about the, the claw. I freaking love, I love the claw so much. Like the fact that you can get the thing, like this, what? What? You see that? You see that quick plate? Anyway. So the shoe. The shoe. So at the top of the camera is this little square thing, and that's the shoe. That's the shoe of the camera. Most cameras in the last long time, 10 years, have hot shoes, uh, 10 years, 15 years, long time, have hot shoes where they interface, the, the camera is sending some sort of electrical signal to the 
Whatever is plugged into it. Whatever's plugged into it. Um, in most cases, that's a light. That's a flash of some sort. In this case, it's a microphone. So this is a this is a, a Sony microphone. It's one of the downsides of of this is that the Sony microphone will only work with the 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 Sony camera. So for most people, this would probably not be a great purchase because it means it can only be used with this camera. It can only be used on the camera. But for me, who vlogs and this is the setup 99% of the time, it's actually like, it's a really good setup. So then I just plug this in here. And then screw it down. And now it takes the audio and it sends it to the camera and it's, it's, it's high quality audio. It's it's uh it's digital audio, um, and it's captured in the camera, and I don't need any sort of uh, wire. So this is the this is the complete setup. So I don't have to need anything else. It's great. But again, you can see my problem. You can see my problem where the the shape of this was awkward. So uh, I sat it. I had to get a. a a uh, bag that was tall enough where this could sit because you can't sit this on its side because this is this is unfortunately I mean, this is delicate so if it were to bash up against something it would break it so I have to like sit it in the bag and then that's how it that's how it goes anyway so now you know now you now you're now you know about the shoe isn't learning fun learning is always so fun we also got four months from Cool Owl and 300 bits from Aldo. Says, so speaking of extending the stream, I'm curious how you choose levels for Mario and Garage. Do you just grab the top five, or is there some other system? Um, so here's here's a very rudimentary way of how it works. When you rate a level, uh, whenever you you go to the website, you f you find a level, you play it, you decide, you rate it. That gets sent to a spreadsheet, and whatever rating that you give it is recorded and it is averaged with other people's ratings of that exact same level. Levels don't even get pushed to me unless they've been rated enough times. So, and like Chaz is the one that made the system, so I don't even know exactly how many times it is. But there's a, there's a certain amount of times things have to be rated. So after it has enough ratings, it will start even showing up in my list. And it can climb or fall depending on what the ratings do, but if it has high enough ratings, um, and it's been rated a lot, and it's you know consistently high. Then I know that I should do that. So that's that's bas that's basically the system. If it hasn't been played very much, then it doesn't get played because it needs more data. Because theoretically, someone could just show up and be like, "Yeah, that's great, five. And then if the next four people are like, "What? No, two. You know, that's going to pull it down, and I'll never I'll never see it. So. Whenever you see something on Morning Mario, a lot of times when people see stuff on Morning Mario, they're like, oh, these levels are always really, like, pretty consistently great. That's because they're rated by lots of people. You know, a lot of people have to say this is good before it shows up on the channel. And that is ideally how Garage will work, too, but, you know, we want as much data as we can get. So if anyone has the game, if they picked up Game Builder Garage, again, if you're looking for some levels to try out, ggrandpa.com is, is how you do that. Someone asked, "What would a cold shoe be used for?" Oh, that's a great that's a that's a great um, uh, question. A uh, cold shoe is the same shape because there are accessories that sit in the shoe. They don't interface with the camera, but they sit in the shoe, and it's just a, it's just a it's just a, a slot to hold things. Sometimes, basically. like that bike interfaces through the hot shoe. My old mic didn't. So you would put the old mic in a cold shoe and it would run a wire to the camera to send the audio through the other wire. Yeah, so like, um, yeah, my old mic could sit in the shoe because the shoe is, they're all the same size, but it doesn't interface with the camera. So it that's not a hot shoe accessory. That would be a cold shoe because it's just sitting in it. It's not doing anything with the camera. So that, that mic had a cable that came out of it and gets plugged into, you know, the thing. Pencil sharpener, snack holder, another camera. People do that. Just FYI, just so you know, there's uh, that's a whole that's actually a whole genre of um, video type. Is that photographers will use a a shoe to mount a GoPro, 
and they'll film themselves doing street photography. So they'll go out and they'll do photography, but they'll be filming what's going on. So it'll show that like a little vlog thing. And then when they snap the photo and they've done their Lightroom edit or whatever, they'll show that up on, on screen. It's a cool idea. You know, if you're into photography, then it's neat. If you're not, then it's not. So, but yeah. Um, That's okay. a shoe. I hope everyone learned something today. Maybe you'll learn something again next week. All right. Thanks again for, for being here this morning. Appreciate it. Um, like I said, Casino Heist, uh, Garfield Cart, Saturday, and then, of course, tomorrow, uh, Breath of the Wild. We yeah. really sincerely hope that you'll you'll join us because it's the, it's the last time Breath of the Wild is going to be on the channel before there's a two in the title in a year or whatever. All right. Have a great Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow night for Breath of the Wild.